Bond, 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 you invested in Nervonix, yep. some other companies. Uh, you're in this service provider space, and you got you got companies that are delivering real value. Uh, Pete Sonsini, you were here last year talking about the enterprise, and we we're saying it was hot. No one was really here talking about that. Now it's hot as hell. So, Charles, real quick, platform as a service, this whole market. What, what's your take on it? Well, you, you mentioned service providers. I think one of the big themes is the rise of the service provider. Uh, the efficiency of the cloud is you know you can run storage at 95% utilization rates versus you know 10, 20% using sort of legacy boxes. So if, if, you, if you're running a VAR today and you're not transitioning to be an MSP, I think, I think you're in trouble. Uh, you know, most of the smart VARs we're seeing are going that way. So I, I'd say, Pete will probably talk about enterprise in a second, but the rise of the service provider is a big, is a big theme we're investing in as uh, cloud venture investors. Pete, um, M&A, NEA's had their share of M&A over the year, data domain, a um, bunch of other companies in uh, big exits. Do VCs think about the M&A um, equation when they're looking at the startups, and, and how, how much goes into that? And Charles, same question for you after uh, Pete answers it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely, you think about it, you got to think about it, but the truth is when you have a large fund, you got to make investments that are going to become big companies, and you got to believe that they're going to go on to be big companies and have that conviction. So while you do look at the M&A market and look at the multiples people are paying, um, certainly with later stage projects, you look at comparable multiples people are paying, and that does impact things. You look at Heroku gets acquired for a you know, extraordinary multiple of revenue, you start thinking, well, platform as a service could be an interesting place to invest, and, and strategic investors will pay up. So, by all means, you, you look at those things, um, but as a venture investor, particularly one like NEA, which is uh, very large and, and really makes our returns off a few very extraordinary outcomes, you got to think about building companies for the long haul. Who's the next, and not who's think the, too much who's the next m and Who's the next target? Who's the next target? Yeah, big M&A deal. Well, I think that, um, you know, certainly platform is a service, but if you look at the virtualized ecosystem, um, you know, there's two big areas that really need to be exploited um, and, and products need to be brought to market, which really solve the problem in a way which they're not being solved now, and that's in storage and, and networking. And so, and, and the truth, that we, we really believe that the really incumbent players in those categories cannot respond to the architectural changes and, and the, really the requirements of, of, of networking and storage uh, in line with what virtualization is bringing. Um, therefore, they're going to have to pay huge huge premiums to get in this market, and it's going to be targeting startups, and I think companies in that area will uh, will do quite well. Charles, what do you, what do you think about that? So, what so, startups so, going to be required? I, I, I won't brag about my companies. I think very highly of Nirvonics and SolidFire. They have big, big company potential, but I'd say of, of the of the non-Vahala portfolio, I think Nimble is one of the hottest companies. They're doing sort of a Equalogic plus data domain plus SSD for the mid-market. They have a world-class team from data domain and an NEA company and uh, a NetApp. I, I think that's uh, the type of innovation and disruption that uh, the big companies who ultimately own most of the customers are going to need to acquire to, uh, to get their mid-market business to the next level. So I'd say Nimble's interesting. Nutanix and sort of data center in a box. I, I think they're going to be on your panel later. Um, yeah, those are some interesting companies. Uh, are we in a bubble? I mean, SSD is booming right now, so Solid State, you're familiar with those companies, you guys are investing in it. I know, uh, Charles, you've made some deals. Um, it's hot, but I hear valuations out, out of, off the charts. So are we in a bubble with SSD? You well, start? I mean, I think SSD is a huge- Come on, yes or no, bubble, yes or no. I mean, it depends how you define bubble. I mean, valuations Over. are very, very high, but SSD and some of the, the problems in storage in a virtualized environment are huge problems. And I think of the current crop of six to 12 storage related companies that are using SSD, that are going out to this market, you're going to see one to two to three multi-billion dollar companies coming out of there. You're going to see probably at least one, you know, major cornerstone of the technology, you know, tens of billions of dollar company coming out of this, because it's such a change with, with cloud and with yeah. SSD. So while valuations are very, very high, I think if you look at the current crop, the current crop of established like who? startups. Like who? like who? Well, I mean, mentioned Nimble, you know, there's Tin Tree, there's, uh, you know, there's Pure, there's uh, Solid Fire. I mean, these, these companies, are, there's half a dozen to 10 of them that are solid, established, up and running, startup stays, but still, um, you know, have getting close to product. Charles. Um, I think there's going to be a great one coming out of that. Charles. Overvalued? No. Opportunity? Not a bubble. Uh, every deal that's done at high prices, the 100 to 400 million pre with minimal revenue, is being done by smart guys like Pete, 
who are running the numbers and saying, here's the percentage odds that they're going to be worth two and a half billion, like an Isilon, a three-part data domain. Here's the odds that they could take out EMC or take out NetApp. So the good odds, right? What's the odds? I mean, these companies disruptives, SSD, I mean, it's huge growth. With, with any individual company, obviously, you know, we're, we're in solid fire with NEA, we're in Nervonics with Mission and Intel. We, we think those companies have great odds, but the uh, more important thing from a macro perspective is that SSD is going to take massive market share from mechanical disk. Cloud, because the 95% utilization rate is going to take massive market share from legacy refrigerators. And, and so you've got you know, 40, 50 billion dollar market caps at the EMCs and VMwares and to a lesser extent the NetApps of the world. That's all going to transition. And a lot of that market cap will be held by those guys as they acquire the disruptors and, and bring those disruptive products into their existing channel and customer bases. But the point is that th these are 40 to 50 billion dollar outcomes that the startups are playing for. So yes, it looks crazy to pay hundreds of millions of pre-money for a company with peanuts of revenue, but if they're building the next NetApp, or even if they have a 10% chance of building the next NetApp, it's not so crazy. Amr Abadala said that uh, storage is the hottest area right now and to invest in and integrating it in into the systems, kind of system software. Uh, so you got HP, EMC, these are big storage vendors. Are they running the risk of just being one big backup farm and these new players taking down their share? Um, I don't see them being just a backup farm. I think they're going to continue to innovate and I think they'll continue to serve their customers well, but I don't think that they can respond and change uh, as change their products and their go to market um, as much as as is needed to really meet the needs that are that are uh, emerging today in the storage market I mean they're at risk right I mean they're definitely at risk I mean, Charles used to say it, that HP and IBM are at risk but at the same time the big banks the JP Morgans the Goldman Sachs prefer to buy from IBM HP EMC rather than from the startups that we invest in, or Ping, who was just here, invest in. So, if, if you're, you know, J.P. Morgan's IT group, and you've got tens of thousands of employees, you have a, you're used to having IBM Global Services manage your product lines for you. So those guys have an important role. They're not driving innovation, but they own the customer. I think I like your point about disruption. Uh, next question about service providers. Service provider cloud market is it overhyped or underhyped? Underhyped, um, you know, again, back to the utilization rate thing. Uh, if you're running a, a world-class cloud operation, a Dropbox, a Box.net, Nervonic, SolidFire, you're running a 95% utilization rate. Uh, Amazon, you know, one of the pioneers in cloud storage, 95% utilization rate in cloud and compute. That's a very powerful value prop versus the big banks that had over-provisioned legacy storage in the past that are running a 10 to 20% utilization, whether it's primary storage or archive. So I, I'd say that the, role of bringing sort of Facebook IT, Google IT to the enterprise is we're in like halfway through inning number one, if that far. It's a major trend and, and uh, customers really want help from service providers. They don't want just the vendors, they want help from service providers to get there. Terramar. What, what, what did you guys talk about at dinner last night? When you guys get together for dinner with other VCs, what do you guys talk about? Buying companies, what's the dinner well, conversation happening? There's too much talking about how great each of our portfolio companies are to one another. And um, so that probably Th thankfully they're all great half, though. Of, half of the discussion. But I'd say that you know it's a lot of talk about valuations are are in fact very high with this area. There's no doubt. Um, there's there's challenges in the venture business. There's you know there's you really need an IPO market to um, to really uh, you know make the venture in, in business sustainable really long term at the levels it's been historically. And so there's a lot of talk about when that's going to come. Um, but you know it's a competitive business and and. Uh, we're, we're friends, uh, but you know, we're competing as well. So you talk about other VCs, of course. VCs always talk about other VCs. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Charles, what, what, what can you share with the folks out there what goes on in these conversations? You there, there's have? a war for talent. So we've talked mainly about storage today, SSD and cloud, but mobile, uh, you know, Android has taken massive market share very quickly. So every one of uh, our mobile companies, NEA's mobile companies, is in a war for talent. Uh, uh, Android developers, iPhone developers, people who have, back to storage, proven exits, the guys who came out of the three parts and data domains, part of the reason these valuations are so high is they're being built by uh, uh, veterans of the companies who had the last big exit. So Solid Fire, which we talked about, is heavily staffed with veterans of uh, left hand. Nimble, which I, I think neither of us are in, is heavily staffed by veterans of data domain. So there's a, an intense war for talent from the, the young guys and the old guys from the existing big wins. So that, that's something that I think 
when we get together for dinner, we talk about a lot. How, how do we get the best guys into our companies? Because yeah. we're bragging about the good companies, but not, not every company works out so well, and it usually it's, it's a combo of market meets team that makes that happen. Uh, talk about Nirvonics for a minute, because Nirvonics is a, is a company that just offered uh, Hurricane Irene people to get yeah. free backup, great marketing over there. They did it for the, uh, in Japan, too. For the, the, uh, they did. Uh, the disaster there. It's just like, they just pull the trigger on that. Is that effectively the model of just saying, I can provision storage instantly? Is that kind of where you see that company going? Sure, so, so w when we invested in left hand, I'd say the, the power of the grid architecture where if, if San Fran goes down to the hurricane, you click a mouse and the storage in New York is safe, uh, was one of the things that appealed to us. And at left hand, it was really more of a, of, of a dream. You know, the, the, I'd say most of their growth was mid-market, cheap, easy to use. And Nirvonics, it's real. Uh, now, now, Nirvonics is focused on sort of Fortune 100 class archive, but if you're a, a big bank, a big media company, you can move your storage around. If Asia goes down, if East Coast goes down, you, you can literally, with a click of a mouse, move you know, dozens of petabytes from New York to uh, LA, and uh, your, your data is actually safer in the cloud than in legacy storage. Yes, it's an emerging technology paradigm, but your data is actually safer, cheaper, easier to manage. Final question, guys, for you guys. What's changed in the startup community at the entrepreneurial level and at the VC level over the past uh, year, two years? Uh, what's changed? Well, I'd say that you know, cloud is hyped. You know, it's pretty much in the hype category now. So, um, you know, a lot of these ideas have been banged around a lot. A lot of these general major categories have been funded. So I think there's, we're, we're kind of waiting for that next layer of innovation as it, as it pertains to cloud. And um, you know, that's a good thing. And, and that's, that's been interesting. It'll be, and I think that we're, we're getting close to that next big wave of uh, you know, change and technology is going to shake things up. Um, I'll just add one point. I'd say the size of the exits and the intensity of competition. So Groupon's on file to go public, so Pete's not going to brag about it, but I'll brag about it for him. You know, people think that's worth about 20 billion. Facebook is trading in the private market for 80 billion. So th these are, we're not shooting for 300 million tech flip outcomes to NetApp anymore. Pe startups that are two, three years old are worth 20 to 80 billion dollars. That gets people excited to build companies, to, to invest in innovation, and that's what's really driving what we do for a living. Pete Sonsini from NEA, Charles Kern from Valhalla Parts. Thanks so much, guys, for that uh, conversation.